For Van Gogh, I chose to do the Starry Night Project because it correlates to our science from earlier this year with learning about um, astronomy and stars and phases of the moon. I would prefer to use a blue cardstock paper like this that's a nice dark blue because it's much more similar to the background of Van Gogh's Starry Night painting. If you can't get a hold of that, you can also use a black, nice thick paper like black cardstock, anything that can hold up to a lot of paint. Even though the book that we're following uses construction paper, I'm not sure if that would hold up with um, as much paint or we're going to be applying to the paper. And I'll put a link to Amazon where you can buy a dark blue cardstock. So every student will have a piece of paper like this and after you talk about Van Gogh and his style and talk about how he's a post-impressionist, meaning he came after the impressionists, and we can see how his style um, differs greatly um, in his brush strokes to the other impressionists that we've looked at. So after you talk about who he is and how he paints, then we can begin to do our own Starry Night painting. To begin, you will have your supplies, which would be your paint, and really you only need five colors, orange, yellow, black, blue, and white, and your cleanup supplies, your paper, and then if you want to, you can have some of these extra items like scissors, paper, and glue to add a cityscape at the bottom. So I'm gonna take my yellow and I'm going to add a crescent moon in the corner of my paper. And we'll just have the kids start by adding paint. We don't even need to start with pencil because these shapes are very simple and there's really no way to mess them up. So I'm going to add the moon up in the corner. And if the moon is small or big, doesn't matter. Let's just make sure that the kids have a crescent moon shape going on there. Now they're going to add stars, but before we do the big stars, we're simply going to decide how to place the stars in our scene. So you can put five to six dots throughout the sky in the upper two thirds of the paper. And of course you can think of a constellation that you know of, or you can make up your own constellation of stars, whatever the kids like, or whatever you want to do as a tutor, if you want to encourage them to do a constellation that they know, or to look at um, pictures of constellations to decide what to do, it's up to you. And these dots are going to be the beginning of our stars, but we're going to be painting stars just like Van Gogh did. And that's um, where we get to really study how he painted and talk about it so that we can mimic him as closely as possible. We're going to be doing linear dabs. So rather than just dots, we want to pull the paint around almost in lines, but dashed lines. So there's some space in between them. When we look at the other impressionists, they have more dot-like brush strokes and like they're very, very um, smooth. Van Gogh has a little bit more of like a a chunky brush stroke to what he does. So you can go around and have the students begin doing these concentric circles of dashed lines all around the stars. In art, there's different principles of design and using these principles um, helps create really successful pieces of art. And one of the principles of design is to have variety we need having things be different throughout the artwork. So right now, all of the stars are all yellow. There's not really a variety of color going on yet. So what we wanna do is to think about having some of them be different. And the way that we're gonna do that is by adding white, more white to some of the stars. We could also have some stars be much, much bigger. That adds variety of size and variety of color, which makes the whole painting much more interesting. So now that I have yellow everywhere, I can add my variety of color by just taking my paintbrush and dipping it into white. Because the paint on my paper is still wet, as I add white, it's gonna actually mix with the yellow and add and actually make its own new color happening around there. And if I wanted it a little bit more yellow, I can take some yellow, add it into the white paint, and just keep making my own variations of 
yellows happening around the star. Some will be dark, some will be light. And each star can be unique and be different from the star next to it. So I'm not going to do my whole painting. I'm simply showing you how our wet paint can be combined with other wet paint right here on the canvas. And you can see how we would do these broken lines around each star in our sky. In the middle of each one, he has an orange dot. So after all the stars are painted and they kind of have these um, big spaces coming out from the center, then you can add an orange dot in the middle of each one, just like Van Gogh did. And of course, if you wanted a little bit of orange happening in the rings around it, you could do that too and keep layering colors all together and make each star the way you want it to be different from its neighbors. We have those. And then of course around the moon that has its own circles as well. So I'm going to start doing my lines around the moon. When I look at Van Gogh's Starry Night, I can see that his moon is actually a little bit more orange. And that's what helps it stand out from the colors around it. So I'm gonna go in and add some orange and some more yellow to my moon. Because we wanna be able to see its shape compared to the sky around it. So we'll have to define those edges a little bit more. And then just keep going around with your yellow and your white all around the different shapes going on here. And this is really fun because there's no wrong way to do it. As long as you're doing short jabs, they can be big, they can be small. There's no way to mess that up. Once this um, stars and the moon are done. Then start time to start adding the different shades and movement in the back of the sky. Van Gogh's has this like swoosh of movement, almost like maybe wind or clouds or something moving through the sky. And it's like it winds around and through the star shapes that we've already created. And to do that, we need blue and white and black. So on your palette, I would say let's start with a little bit of black. I guess it's really up to the students, um, but you're simply going to start making these beautiful pathways with your dashed lines throughout your sky. Kind of twirling it and making it go around as if the wind is going throughout. If we made the whole thing just black, not a lot of stuff would stand out. So just like with the stars, we want to have some parts of the sky be lighter and some parts of the sky be darker. So that's why we have the white and the blue to help us create some more variety in the tone of the sky. So I can just go into my next color. And as, of course, I add the blue paint onto the wet black paint, I'm even creating another shade of blue. I get to mix the paint right there on my canvas. What students might notice is as they drag their blue paint around and it touches a star, maybe they'll pick up a little bit of yellow paint and they'll notice that something happens. It might turn green. And you'll notice in the, if you look closely at Van Gogh's painting, he has a lot of green in his sky too because he did the same thing. As he painted the wet paint, it combined with the other colors he had already done and blue and yellow make green. So students would simply continue doing these swirly things with black and blue. And of course, to add some more dimension and variety, let's pull some white into there. My white is now creating a light blue and some gray in the sky. And I'm simply making these beautiful pathways around until the whole sky is covered, but in different tones of blues and whites and grays. So the students would finish the whole area here, and then they would come down to about a third of the paper. So just pretend that that's all completed with our 
brush strokes. Now we get to use blue and black to create some low hills. So I can take my black paint and just imagine how I want the hills to go with my eye. And then I will simply, after I imagine it, I will go ahead and paint over what I just saw in my mind's eye. I'm gonna start with black and kind of pull over some little hilltops about a third up from the bottom of my paper. Now I'm gonna add some interest and variety by adding another color. I'm gonna add some blue in here. Different hills. I'll add a little bit of white too to show that the sun, or excuse me, the moon is kind of gleaming down and creating some light here on my hillsides. And again, I'm doing linear strokes, not so much round dabs, but more lines, moving lines throughout the paper. A lot of movement going out th on throughout the whole scene. Once the students have the sky and the hills, maybe there's more time, and if there is, they can add a little cityscape to the bottom of their painting. So you could have scraps of all different colors of papers. Um, it could be just black if you wanted it like a silhouette. It's not very easy to see, but it kind of looks like dark shadow. You can also have any colors of paper that you wanna add. So I chose just to do yellow, blue, and black. And students could cut out little house shapes or building shapes and put these on the lower line of their paper. Um, just use some type of glue, whether a glue stick or liquid glue. Put some glue on your shapes and begin to layer them just like that. If they're on top of the paint, that's fine. The paint will just help make those papers stick as well. Things look especially pretty and interesting when they're layered. So I could take another shape and lay it on top of a different shape. And that way it almost looks like one building's in front of the other and it has some of that three-dimensional aspect to that.